I'm allowed to hunt the reindeer every year. So the 24th of August, four o'clock in the morning, me and the dog start walking from the bottom of the well here. After two hours on my left side, there is something white. Oh shit, it's a polar bear. It's two polar bears. I saw the mother just looking at me. It just became a nice feeling, something to uh, dream about. I'm happy for the memory of the polar bear which followed me the whole day. They have a connection with the nature, the connection which we lost. And that's why we are here, I think. Here you have nothing between you and the spirits of the world. Here you have to bend your head because there is something bigger than you, much, much bigger. What it is, I don't know. I know only it is and I am. I think most people are here looking for some sort of adventure, like coming to a place where they've never been before, where they may have seen these beautiful pictures of the Arctic or something which has kind of inspired them to come up here, but they're just here to experience this raw nature. They say that when you're hit by the bug, the polar bug, you never leave. Hit by the polar bug? That's an interesting choice of words. We traveled way up to Long Bien from Los Angeles looking for a different kind of polar bug. Fun facts. At 78 degrees latitude, Long Bien is the northernmost city in the world. And in this moment, I'm likely the northernmost David. During our six day stay, the amount of sunlight in a day will have reduced by over 90 minutes, like a season in fast forward as the Arctic prepares for a long polar night. And climate change set the Arctic to defrost, which could potentially bring buried, but not quite decomposed matter like the bubonic plague back into circulation. But more on that in a minute. I don't think I'm allowed to be buried here. Why not? Because the permafrost and uh, uh, you will come up and say hello again after about 10 years. <laughs> So these are our ground temperature monitoring instruments. We're measuring ground temperatures here. This is one of our freezer rooms. There we go. This is permafrost from 47 meters depth. So it's quite a ways below the surface. If this is the ground surface, below this, you have the permafrost. And the permafrost is the zone which remains frozen throughout the year. So it's like the permanently frozen ground. Permafrost forms in places like this, really high in the world. And it's just excellent at preserving things. I mean, it preserves organic material, plants, ice. So when you put something into permafrost, you're essentially putting them into a freezer. But what happens when that freezer breaks and things start to melt? Apparently, even the most advanced apocalypse bunkers aren't safe from climate change. The massive vault was buried under the Arctic permafrost to safeguard seeds in case of war or natural disasters. But warming temperatures near the pole melted the ice and flooded the entrance to the vault. What is the seed vault exactly? Um, they like to refer to the seed vault as the ultimate insurance policy against agricultural disaster. They preserve seeds that are endangered for various reasons, potentially because of global warming. Have you heard the rumor that it's illegal to die here? I have heard that rumor. I can see why up here, um, it's not a place where they would want burials. Um, the bodies are preserved forever, essentially. So that could create all sorts of problems. Bodies popping up out of the ground would be a little bit strange. Ingen får lov till att ödelägga dem eller få föra dem till Jesus. Heller inte för dina mangler. Att du vet om din brist, det är heller en styrka än en svaghet. The cemetery here is uh, very special because there is tundra here. You can't dig very, very, very deep here. So uh, when uh, there was a big pandemic in 1918, they had to bury people here at home. 
there was a Spanish flu outbreak in Vongerbien, and seven miners died, and they were buried in the graveyard. The bodies are very, very low in the ground because of the permafrost. If this organic material is to thaw due to changes in permafrost temperature, then it suddenly becomes significant. I'm not sure if there's an ancient plague that's buried in the permafrost, but maybe. The interesting thing about plague is it's not gone. People think it's gone, but it's not actually. It's, it's still in Asia, Africa, North America. I mean, yeah, if you go out to like the Four Corners area in Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, there's still plague there, and people get plague nearly every year. An anthrax epidemic is wreaking havoc in western Siberia 75 years after the most recent outbreak. And scientists believe a thawed reindeer carcass may be to blame. Anthrax is interesting because it's, it's a bacteria and it's able to form this spore that lasts for a very long time in the environment. Well, you freeze it and it, it could last forever. So we're not exactly sure where the anthrax came from that's there. It could have been from 10 years ago or 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago. Like if you put influenza out on a, on a surface on some table, it doesn't tend to last very long, maybe a day or two and still infectious. But freezing it for a long time without a lot of temperature variations, it actually seems like it survives pretty well. Up north, where there's a lot of birds who carry the flu, so a lot of the flus we get are spread by birds. It's actually not inconceivable that these birds are going to be picking up these older strains of flu and bringing them back into circulation. There are sort of all of these feedback loops in the Arctic which work together in a sense. And so climate change is important for permafrost settings because there's a fair bit of organic material which is incorporated into the permafrost. And so if this organic material is to thaw due to changes in permafrost temperature, then it suddenly becomes available for these sort of microbes and things which are living in the soil to act on and produce greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide or methane. So from the climate change perspective, it's a problem. When you first see these landscapes, you never forget them. People are afraid of the permafrost melting, the climate changing. Things would vanish, money would disappear, a house would disappear, friends would maybe disappear. The only thing you have is memory. We went to Long Yerbien to find out why it's supposedly illegal to die there and found out you just shouldn't be buried there because as the permafrost melts, more greenhouse gases will further accelerate the changing climate, making permafrost less permanent and perhaps some well-preserved contagions will emerge from the frost like tiny zombies return from a long nap. Or maybe one of these doom and gloom climate docks will actually inspire action. But probably not.